When most people think about how the First World War began, they usually focus on the assassination of Franz Ferdinand and how it snowballed into the Great War. Let's take a closer look at what happened in Sarajevo and the supposed spark of one of the deadliest conflicts in human history. First, let's look at Franz Ferdinand. He was born on the 18th of December, 1863 in Graz, Austria, his full name being Franz Ferdinand Karl Ludwig Joseph Maria. When he was just 11 years old, Franz became very wealthy when his cousin, Francis V, Duke of Medina died and he inherited his vast estate. Then in 1889, his other cousin, the Crown Prince Rudolf, committed suicide, leaving Franz's father heir to the Austrian Empire. However, his father renounced this title, so Franz became the next in line. He was Catholic and very conservative. He had a hatred towards the Hungarians, viewed the Slavs as subhuman, and referred to the Serbs as pigs. However, he wanted to preserve the Austro-Hungarian Empire and was willing to put aside his personal feelings in order to maintain peace and stability, which in actuality wasn't really that peaceful. He was very much against a war with Russia and was willing to make the dual monarchy of Austria-Hungary into a tripartite state of Austria-Hungary and a union of the Slavic peoples. Being a male of the ruling Habsburg family, Franz entered military service at a young age and became a lieutenant by age 14, a captain by 22, a colonel at 27, and a major general at 31. In September of 1902, he also received the rank of admiral at the close of the Austro-Hungarian naval maneuvers. And while never going through any formal staff training, he was considered eligible for command. In 1894, Franz Ferdinand was stationed at a military garrison in Prague. He soon met Countess Sophie Chotek, a lady in waiting for Archduchess Isabella, wife of the Duke of Tessin. Many assumed he'd fallen for the Duke's eldest daughter Marie, but Isabella herself discovered the relationship when she found Franz's locket lying on the tennis court with a picture of Sophie inside. A scandal ensued, because only someone related to the reigning family of the country could be eligible for consort. So since Sophie didn't quite meet these standards, she could not be Empress. This did not discourage Franz, however, who was able to marry Sophie on the 28th of June, 1900. They would have three children together, though none of them would be able to inherit the Austrian throne. During the Balkan Wars, he urged for the reappointment of Konrad von Hutzendorf as chief of staff. And while Konrad wanted war and Franz wanted peace, both did agree that the Habsburg army needed to be modernized. In 1913, Franz became inspector general of all the armed forces of Austria-Hungary. Then in March of 1914, he announced that he would be visiting Sarajevo. The reason for the Archduke's visit to Sarajevo was to inspect the troops in the recently annexed territory of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And on the way there, their car overheated and the Archduke commented, Our journey starts with an extremely promising omen. Here our car burns, and down there they will throw bombs at us. Franz and Sophie surprised everybody by arriving a day early, and they had a nice time around the town. Later that day, a member of the Bosnian parliament urged the Archduke and Duchess to cancel the whole trip, but his concerns were dismissed. The next day, which was their 14th wedding anniversary, they drove towards the town hall. To get there, they had to cross one of the bridges over the river where an assassin was waiting. As the car was crossing the bridge, a bomb was thrown at it, but it bounced off the hood of the 1911 Graf Stift 2832 PS Double Phantom and it wounded multiple people, including two of the Archduke's men. They carried on towards the town hall where they listened to the usual speeches, and after that, Franz changed his plans because he wanted to go check on the people who had been injured by the bomb. On the way there, there was a bit of confusion about where to go. The driver turned off the Apple key, but General Oscar Patiorek, sharing Ferdinand's car, told the driver to turn around and go back. Since there was no functioning reverse in the car, it stopped right by Schiller's Delicatessen, where Gabriela Princip was standing. Princip raised his Belgian FN 1910 pistol and aimed it at Patiorek, and fired from only a few feet away. But the shot missed and hit Sophie, killing her instantly. Franz then exclaimed, Sophie, Sophie, don't die, stay alive for our children. Princip then adjusted his aim and killed Franz Ferdinand. Before he could turn the gun on himself though, it was quickly wrestled from his hands. More on Gavrilo Princip in a later video. Franz and Sophie were not very well liked, so when the train carrying their bodies was making its way back to Vienna, officers were actually ordered not to salute. Also, people who were initially invited to attend the funeral were instead told not to come. The funeral itself only lasted around 15 minutes, and keep in mind that Franz was supposed to be the next emperor of the Habsburg Empire, and even in death, they purposely showed him and his wife the utmost disrespect. Thank you for watching everybody. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, share, and if you haven't already, hit subscribe.